Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. Uh, this video is going to talk about a modification I made to my pre-filter uh, because I removed the socks because I cannot clean them outside with a garden hose anymore. It's just too bitterly cold out. Uh, this morning it was uh, minus 16 below zero with windshield factor included in there. So this is the socks that I use. They're seven and a half inch socks for this 2215 e that I'm using as a pre-filter. And in earlier videos I explained how I made the piping, the outlet piping with holes in it to go inside of this pre-filter. But that's in earlier videos. Anyhow, I decided after watching a video of Sean's that uh, he had an idea of just using matting. So I decided to change it over, use a Tupperware dish, uh, put some holes in it, and it fits very nicely inside of the pre-filter. So I went to Joanne Fabrics and for about 30 bucks I bought five yards of one inch thick batting. Now I've used batting before for years and years and years. I cut it uh, six and a half long in strips and then I took that and cut it in another six and a half. So it's a six and a half by six and a half square. And then from these squares, I will use a template to cut the circles. And this is my template that I'll use to cut these circles that will fit inside of the Tupperware bowl that I'm using. And of course, I made hundreds of them. They're not perfectly round, but they're just pre-filters that are going to be thrown away. And I've designed my pre-filter where I can actually change it in less than 30 seconds. So in 30 seconds, I can have the filter stop, put a new mat, one of these mats in, and uh, in, thir and in less than 30 seconds, have the whole thing running again. So it's really not a big hassle to change these, not in 30 seconds. I mean, you can do it while you're feeding your fish. Shut off, feed your fish, change your matting. But there is one thing, because the velocity coming out of the outlet pipe is so strong, like a garden hose, it'll blow a hole right through the matting. So this is nothing but a drain that you could buy at any hardware store with a little bit of thin uh, sponge behind it. And then this will be inserted in the center of the pre-filter as you can see here. And this will diffuse the incoming water. As you can see in this video, it is dead quiet, and that's the way it's been designed. But even at, at startup, look at the detritus that it's picked up out of the fish tank just from startup. And this is pumping at least a thousand gallons an hour through this 50 gallon fish tank. Now, the some people have told me why do I pump so much volume of water through my fish tanks? Like, for example, my last video had the goldfish in a 20-gallon tank, and I pumped 280 gallons an hour through that one. Well, I always believed in volume of moving water through your tank to get it clean. It's no different if you were going to uh, clean your rugs. You wouldn't want a vacuum cleaner that barely sucked, right? You, you would leave behind lots and lots of dirt still stuck into your rugs and on your floor. And that's the same way here. 
you have a slow pump and it's not going to pick up as much. It's going to take longer to pick up something and a lot of the detritus and smut and algae and everything is going to stay in solution and not get into your pre-filter. And the whole idea here of having a pre-filter is to get all that out of there so you can dispose of it and it gets out of the system and doesn't help pollute the system and lower your redox. This is the reason why saltwater people use pre-filters that could be changed very quickly and expediently so they can keep their water and their redox as high as possible. Now for me to change this pre-filter takes about 30 seconds. And the only reason I know that is I actually time myself. I disconnect it at the disconnect there and after the water has stopped and I just pull that little bucket out, it comes out, put a new piece of matting in, put the diffuser back in there, rehook up the pipe and turn it all back on. It's all done within 30 seconds and when this gets full it will start overflowing the top there of the insert and it will just overflow back into the sump and then that lets you know that the your pre-filter is dirty and it's time to change it so it will it kind of tells the hobbyists when it's time to change so you don't keep it in there too long what you're looking at here, this is the pre-filter after it's only ran for three hours. And look how much dirt is already in that pre-filter. And you can imagine what it's going to be after six hours or seven hours or eight hours. But anyhow, this just goes to show you that volume over velocity. You want to move water and you want to get that tank clean and you want to get your tank, uh, you know, polished and canister filters seem to do that because they have such a large volume inside them where you can put all kinds of different filter mattings and everything else but when you have a sump you need a real good pre-filter but you need a pre-filter that isn't a hassle to change and clean because then you're going to get lazy and not want to do it so you got to have a pre-filter that can be changed and uh, maintenance can be done to it very very quickly because you're more likely to keep your maintenance up on it or what do they call it your tank husbandry uh, you'll keep up on it but anyhow it's polishing the water and it's doing such a good job as you can see here the water actually looks crystal clear gin clear in fact it is polishing it so good and that's after about three hours so I thought I would make this video to let everybody know if you're thinking about getting a pre-filter you could use this matting that you buy you don't have to buy the expensive stuff at it like a Dr. Foster and Smith or anything else you can make your own you can put it in your canister filters I've used this matting for years and years and years never had a problem with it but uh, as you can see by here how crystal clear the water is and I thought I would make this so give people ideas. I got an idea from watching Sean's video to do this and I hope you got an idea so if you want to make a pre-filter to use what I'm showing you. So until next time I want everybody to have a happy new year and hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much.